Time for the international papers now, where Elena with us as ever. It's obvious, really. It's one Morning. story, isn't it? It's the Murdochs. Good day to you. Um, Rebecca Brooks facing questioning. How are the British papers looking forward to it? Particularly, of course, the, uh, the Murdoch papers. Well, well, let's start with the non-Murdoch ones. Mm -hmm. Independent this morning has got Murdochs in the dock on their front page. Slight exaggeration, of course, because they are just being questioned by MPs rather than as part of a criminal inquiry. But the paper does say they could be questioned under oath, which means they would then be liable to perjury charges if anything they say turns out not to be true. The Independent asked its readers online to vote for what questions they would most like MPs to put to those three there. And the top question that came out was... You know, when did Rebecca Brooks find out about this wrongdoing at the News mm. of the World and how could she possibly not have known? They say she needs to explain also not only about phone hacking, but why she employed private investigators known to have criminal records at the News of the World and why her newspapers made payments to police, something she admitted way back in 2003. She's also set to face tough questioning about her relationship with David Cameron. It's been re revealed by Downing Street just this morning. The paper says that she was a guest at his 44th birthday party recently, so then he He's under even more intense pressure to explain why he spent so much time socialising with News International chief executives while his government was considering the company's bid to take over B Sky B. It also, the Independent also points out that bookmakers in Britain are now giving six to one odds on David Cameron himself having to resign over phone hacking. So it gets all nearer and nearer to the top. Those readers are also quite keen to find out, the paper says, why James Murdoch authorised the payment of millions of pounds in 2009 as uh, out-of-court settlements to people who'd had their phones hacked by News International. They say, is this hush money? And if so, above all, when did his father, Rupert Murdoch, find out about it? How could he not have been aware of such big payments? And if he was, then that means collusion in possible criminal activity would go right to the top of News International. There's so many intriguing lines, aren't there? And, and the, the other new one, which has emerged in the last 12 hours or so, is the matter of uh, Sean Hoare, the former News of the World journalist, uh, found dead at his uh, home last night. He's on the front page of The Guardian. He is. They run an interview on the inside that was done with him just a couple of weeks ago about his deciding to blow the whistle. He talked to the New York Times about a year ago and he was the first person to say that Andy Coulson must have known about the phone hacking that went on. Now, he told uh, The Guardian in this article of a, of a couple of weeks ago that as a show business reporter at News of the World, the, they, the paper destroyed his physical health by forcing him to go out partying with uh, celebrities and take cocaine and so on, creating the addiction that most probably has now killed him, although we don't know exactly how he died. He says that he, by revealing all about hacking, he wanted to lift the lid on an entire newsroom where he says the culture was so intimidating that grown men would regularly break down in tears. And uh, he says there was a culture of arrogance and impunity and most relevantly to today's questioning, he says no one working at the paper could have been unaware that phone hacking was routine. And bizarrely, um, the Murdoch papers finally difficult to actually get their stories across today because their websites are down. Yes, uh, if we, we've got the Times here in physical form and they've got that hacking witness dead as their front page, but uh, the uh, um, hacking collective Lulzsec has managed to pirate the websites of The Sun, The Times and The Sunday Times overnight. The Times still having technical problems. The Sun has managed to uh, salvage their site today, but hopefully we can have a look at what it looked like overnight. It uh, redirected to this fake story saying that Rupert Murdoch had committed suicide. OK, incredible. Right, we're going to move on to something completely different. I'm going to look at Egypt, in fact, a story about the Washington Post looking at the US's role in uh, the problems and the protests that they've been having there against the interim government. Yeah, the Washington Post says that the US has earmarked $65 million to boost democracy projects in Egypt, but they're not finding it very straightforward to find out who to give that cash to, because in the political environment there's so many conflicting groups with different demands, and the US is desperate to make up for its error in backing its supposedly stable Mubarak government until the very last minute. So now they're backing uh, ad hoc groups set up by young protesters to do stuff like... Uh, make TV ads backing free elections. But those groups, uh, lots of them are considered illegal by the interim military government. So now uh, the US government is backing quite extreme left groups that the Egyptian government wants to see banned. And finally, very quickly, Harry Potter, big, big film, um, but viewers in China waiting to see it still. Yes, the Communist Party has postponed the release date by two weeks to clear space on cinema screens for a communist epic called The Beginning of the Great Revival, which tells the story of the party's funding. It's meant to encourage young people to be inspired by the example of Mao, but most of them on internet message boards are just hoping the boy wizard takes its place soon. <laughs> Beginning of the Great Revival. Perhaps it'll come to French screens soon, you never know. Elena, yes. thanks very much. Uh, Elena here with the uh, International Papers.